This tutorial is on estimating with confidence. This time we're going to move into a one sample t interval. t interval, we use a one sample t interval to make an inference about the population mean, similar to a z interval. However, we use the sample standard deviation s of x because we don't know the population standard deviation. A lot of people will get confused here and say, well, what is the difference between a Z and a T? And this is your key part right here. We use the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation because we don't know it yet. And in many cases, that's actually true. We don't have the population standard deviation in the real world. So we are using our sample standard deviation to come up with our standard deviation. And then we use a t-test. I am the same conclusion will still come up the same. I am 95% confident the true mean for whatever the context of the problem is, is between blank and blank. And that's whatever you found your interval to be. Let's break down the equation. It looks very similar to a z, again, except that we use s of x instead of sigma x. Sample mean is x bar. T star is new, and I'll explain how to find T star. S of x is our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Again, this part right here, the S of x over the square root of n, is your standard error. The margin of error is the plus or minus when you multiply all of this together. We also need to find what we call the degrees of freedom. This is important with a t-test. Degrees of freedom is whatever your sample size is minus one. Easy to find, but it makes all the difference in the world when we go to use our t distribution table. Where does t star come from? You can find t star using the t distribution, same spot where you'd find z distribution. z was down below, here's z star, and then your confidence level is down here. When we move into a T star, we have to use different rows, and each one of these rows represents our degrees of freedom. And then we figure out what confidence level we're interested in. So let's say your sample size was 20. That would mean your degrees of freedom is 19. So I'm looking at this row right here. And depending on your confidence level at the bottom of the table, where the row and the column intersects is your T star. So if I follow, let's say we're going to do 95% confidence. So I'm going to follow this up, follow this across, and where those two would intersect, that number is your T star. So in this case, my T star would be 2.093. If my sample size was 20, my degrees of freedom would then be 19. And my confidence level, they told me, was 95%. Remember, to get your sample uh, mean and your sample standard deviation, if it isn't given to you, you can use your software, which is uh, Crunchit software for, for some people, or a graphing calculator or a mini tab or whatever your software might be. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of how to use Crunchit. So I go to Crunchit online. Let's say I'm looking at chapter 7, and I'm interested in mileage, and I, use I hit the statistics button, summary statistics, column. Don't forget to highlight the column mile miles per gallons, because that's what we're looking at here. And then hit OK. And up will pop our data. Here's our mean. Here's our sample size of 20. Here's our sample mean. Here's our sample standard deviation, 6.8934. This number right here would be our sample standard deviation if we were using Crunchit along with the other pieces of information. Let's say I walk. Let's let's walk through an example. I, I took a sample of weights of 48 mini Tootsie Rolls and found the average weight to be 3.1 grams. On the package, it says they should be about 3, but I'm not sure about that. So I'm going to test it. I found a sample of 48 to be averaged about 3.1 grams. I found the sample standard deviation to be about 0.5. Find the 90% confidence interval for what you think the actual weight of a Tootsie Roll is. So let's fill this number in. Our x bar is our sample mean. And our sample mean in this scenario was 3.1 grams. So I'm going to put that in here, 3.1, plus or minus t star. Let's come back to 
and I know my standard deviation. So I'm going to find my standard deviation uh, to be 0 0.5. So I'm going to put that on top. Divide it by the square root of my sample size, which was 48. So I divide by the square root of 48. I need my T star. My degrees of freedom is what I'm going to have to find first, which is my sample size of 48 minus 1, which is 47. Let's go find our T star from the table. 47 was my, my degrees of freedom. However, 47 is not in my table. If that's the case, then what you have to do is go up to the next number. So in this case, I'm actually going to look at 40. We're going to be more conservative, better to be safe than sorry. So I'm looking at 40, and we were looking at a 90% confidence. So I'm going to follow this row up to right here, this number across, and where those two numbers would or those two lines would intersect would give me 1.68. Four, that's my T star. So I go back here and fill that in. 1.684 times the standard error. Again, do this part, the standard error, in parentheses first, and you get 0 0.072 on your calculator. Multiply that by the 1.684 and you get your 3.1 plus or minus 0.12. So if I break that down to the two numbers, that gives me 3.1 plus 0.12, which is going to give me 3.22, and 3.1 minus 0.12, which is going to give me 2.98. So my 90% confidence interval is 2.98 to make that an 8 here to 3.22. So what have I found? I am 90% confident the true mean weight for the mini Tootsie rolls in grams is somewhere between 2.98 and 3.22 grams. Again, because of my sample of 48 Tootsie Rolls, I was able to go through and come up with a confidence interval where I think the true mean weight for a Tootsie Roll is, for a mini Tootsie Roll, and I'm 90% confident the true mean weight is between 2.98 and 3.22. Again, the only reason we have to do a T interval instead of a Z interval is because we don't know the population standard deviation, so we have to find the sample standard deviation. That's key here. The sample is what we end up using our S of X because we don't know sigma X. Sometimes they'll tell you what S of X is within the paragraph. Sometimes you'll have to find S of X with your own data. They'll give you the set of data and use your graphing calculator or use Crunchit to find your sample standard deviation and then you fill in the equation.